Okay. Oh, I need my coffee. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, Two guys on a sofa. Oh, is that what it is? Two guys on a You know, it's like Alec and the is uh, between two ferns, just two guys on a sofa. Yeah, I like that. Also, maybe just Eric and Doug. <laughs> Eric and Doug. The Eric and Doug. Or... Eric and Douglas. Oh, Douglas. Yeah, Douglas. Mr. Raditz and Mr. Malloy. Sir Douglas. Sir Douglas. <laughs> with, my Sir. False, with my false title from uh, Scotland. How's this? How's the lighting? We good? You you you, hey, you look good wherever I see you. Look, I'm, and I'm it's in like, a band. I realized the importance of sound and lighting. So you know, I always thought it was just about singing. It's a little bit more than that. It's, more. It, there's some content there. We must have some content in the context. Yes. Um, yes. I, you know, it's it's uh, it's one of those things where I don't want to anyone to think there's a possibility that I in, in anywhere near the realms of uh, of knowledgeable regarding films as one Douglas Malloy is. Uh, however, the conversations generally turn pretty good, probably mostly for me because I'm just getting a constant education, and you know, without without any sort of real theater, the truth is. We kind of do this sometimes where we just talk and the idea might be that, you know, maybe someone else finds it interesting <laughs> too. But we, we can you hope. Know? We'll have the conversation that we often have, you know. My life is basically based on fictional events that come from a movie uh, when I was growing up. So I have always loved movies and also love the, uh, the business of movies. And the Oscars are really about the business of movies. But of course, when we talk about that, we're talking about art and enjoyment. And and so it's the business of art and enjoyment. Oh, well, and I gotta say, that's something we've talked about before. It's really hard to award art. We love art, we love the art of movies. You and I have a real, a real fondness for it, as, as do many, and it's so, it seems against nature to award artistic, um, presentations and when it comes to films however i like that the oscars uh we always we always kind of raise the we elevate the awareness of the importance of the art of film you know in other words we we may not always love the film um that, that gets nominated or awarded we may not love um the ceremony but the fact that we get a chance to talk about films and uh, maybe be uh exposed to films that we uh, wouldn't have seen if it weren't for the oscars makes me uh, kind of like pro Oscars, although, you know, the direction many would say is there's this kind of some distancing from uh, the Oscars for various reasons. Uh, they've gone through various reasons why ratings seem to be down. Um, I'm still going to be watching March 12th, uh, 2023. It's 2023 this year. Um, and I'm going to be watching because I'm excited. Um, I don't know if we want to talk about your what you what you love that's that's being nominated, or we want to do some picks today because I, I don't I didn't really plan this, Douglas. Let's talk a little bit though about the one thing that you said that's that's I think really important. All right, first of all, it's it's a film industry, so you're awarding people in the industry. You know, there's no such thing as you know uh, the awards for best you know abstract artist or something like that. Should it, be it, it, well, maybe, but it would be to get people to see things they wouldn't ordinarily see. Now that's exciting, and then to reward work that is, that is particularly outstanding. But it's not all that difference, uh, different from uh, any other industry that rewards its own, except these are stars, mm. these are celebrities, right. these, it's glamour. Mm. So the Oscars really should have an element of fun. You know, the red carpet is, is totally goofy and a lot of fun. Right. Um, now, when you get into more, you know, recognizing things that are outstanding, you can recognize things. I thought one of the best movies this year was Top Gun Maverick. I mean, it, it, it doesn't sound like an artsy film. It's not. But it's a, it's a really good film. One of the worst films that's nominated is Triangle of Sadness, which is a movie, you know, about rich people are terrible and you know, not exactly profound. Uh, it's a bad movie, but that's also nominated. And, you know, the the fact that you nominate 10, you're not really getting, you're really emphasizing the, let's see the ones 
that are outstanding in some way or that I have been picked for uh, or nominated for some other reason than just quality. I think, you know, there's probably some malcontents who just decided to put in a movie like Triangle of Sadness that just disses the very people that are going to be at the Oscar celebration. You know, so it's, 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 it makes everybody a little like, I'm just, just kind of a mean it's the main thing is so it's maybe it's the uh, the, the when we when we have some of the discomfort when when art makes us uncomfortable they say it's something to be said for that art but I will agree that some of the nominations I don't like uh, often uh, and I'm sure I'm not I'm sure everyone probably feels this way and I also agree mm -hmm. with you when it comes to Maverick Top Gun this year you know um, I, I I think it was at one of the Academy's uh, luncheons or something um, Steven Spielberg is is uh, supposed to have said to Tom Cruise you know you really saved our ass this industry with with this movie and when you look at its blockbuster success and that 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 the appeal to see this movie uh, which which tom cruise is not up for a best actor award although i think he worked a lot harder yeah, than, than, but you uh, see, they, they don't particularly like banshees of an issue yeah. and uh, Co colin uh, uh Fer farrell but you know i i love the uh i love the glamour of it the fact that steven spielberg is talking to tom cruise and you know talking about uh, talking about the business of movies because he held back on that movie for a very long time until it could be released in theaters. That's really what Spielberg is talking about, yeah. is rejuvenating, you know, Top Gun was in, as they say, in the can or finished for a long time before it came out. And you see the previews year after year during the COVID period of time. Uh, but that's really what he was talking about. But, you know, everybody went gaga over, you know, uh, Cruz being at the the nominees luncheon because he doesn't usually do things like that i mean he's a movie star and so the the that there is there are hard-working actors and with little recognition and then there are movie stars who like dicaprio or cruz or meryl streep that are star stars and so it, it is fun to watch the, the the difficulty about the nominees though often is that you get recognized for a lesser movie because they passed you over for a great movie. Like uh, the Banshees of, I can never remember. Inishiran. Inishiran. You know, I love those three guys, the director, Mark, Mark McDonough, the, the two actors. I've seen the movies that he's done before. Well, the Banshees of... Inishiran. It's not a good movie. It's beautifully shot, it's well acted, but in the end, you know, Bill Murray said one time in, Tootsie and his character said, I don't really want people to enjoy my movies. I want them to come out of, or his scripts, his plays. I want them to come out of the theater going, what was that? Mm. Well, that's one of those movies. And, and so you're actually recognizing them for their prior body of work. Like when DiCaprio got an award for, uh, for The Revenant when really he was being rewarded because they passed him over for Wall Street. <laughs> so, you know, those are those are like little inside industry things. And and it and it is they rank the movies now the ten, the, the people that vote for them. Uh, so it it is, you know, you may get uh, you know uh, a, a lesser known movie because, you know, this is all studio driven as well, um, but because they are ranked, and you might get people that are angry with the studio and therefore that reflects badly on the, on the, the film. The politics of the nomination mm -hmm. process is one that unfortunately becomes a part of the award ceremony and the recognizing, and I think it's unfortunate, although if there were a better system out there to award films, uh, I mean, you take a look at some of the other uh, ceremonies, I mean, you look at the Golden Globes, uh, the BAFTAs, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. pick pick another award ceremony, you're always going to have kind of an element of uh, potential favoritism sure. uh, or the element of, uh, you know, a, a, a group of people who are voting who are preferential outside of the realms of maybe the the, the average moviegoer, you know, which also, also is shown by the fact that you do have blockbusters that go unrecognized mm -hmm. often uh, and, in the and awards. More, Most people don't want to see not. a lot of the films, that the, the, the latest... Uh, the latest film that made twenty four thousand uh, <laughs> dollars, yeah, you know, not in a day or in a weekend, but, but in the duration. That. Yeah, uh, when you see uh, 
what is the actress's name? Uh, I, I can't remember. It's Andrea Riseborough. Okay. So in a way, I kind of you kind of want to root for the Andrea Riseborough because mm-hmm. I mean she plays a you know a drunk woman and congratulations you're a great actress and at the same time um, I didn't see it so I can't really maybe it was that good but you don't want to be just blockbuster driven because then you miss out on some of these gems mm-hmm. and those that people may not see or want to see I think there's a lot of films I've seen in the theaters um, or at film festivals that I've said. To my friends, this is an amazing film. You, I cannot wait. She's one of my favorite films. Uh, Maggie's Plan. Uh, Greta mm-hmm. Gerwig, written, like written, written by uh, Rebecca Miller, daughter right. of Arthur Miller. I remember seeing it in Sundance and just like, maybe it's because I met the crew and cast and I was kind of enthralled with just meeting them. But also, I loved the film before I met them. And I remember when it came to Fort Myers, uh, the Bell Tower Cinema. <laughs> I, I brought, we, it was a date night for another couple, and mm-hmm. nobody in my party liked the film at all, and it was in the theaters for probably a week. So Sony, I would love to see how Sony Classic Pictures did on that film. I would imagine that they didn't do too well, but it was such a great film. Um, well, it, and that, that is one of didn't the Didn't win things. any awards either. Well, you know, how do you get these films, you know, to people? Now, with streaming services, you know, you're, you're getting to see. I saw one of the best films of this past year was a movie called Vengeance, which was a funny murder mystery, but it had a lot to say about uh, how different classes in the, uh, in the United States perceive each other. Right? You know, when a New Yorker goes down to Texas regarding a murder mystery. Uh, but, you know, there, you know, that was just simply passed over, but it's a perfect little movie. You know, the the nominees that the that the that you can guarantee are, you know, things like Avatar, uh, the way to water and um and and it's happily little surprising that, you know, Top Gun is on that list. But the other the other like eight movies are movies people go, huh? Right. And, and so and so, right. you know, you, uh, um, and, but then you, but then you go and watch them is what I do. And I think a lot of people are like that. They'll say what, but then they'll like, well, maybe everything everywhere all at once is something I should look into. Uh, and, yeah. and who's going to, what, what movie's going to win? Can we talk about that? What well, you, uh, the, what are you predicting? The, the momentum is for everything everywhere at once, which is an interesting movie, which is, uh, in some ways, uh, intellectually stimulating. It's kind of fun. It's not a good movie. <laughs> but um right but, yeah, and then, I, I had to give I, I literally had to pause and I, maybe i was watching it too late but it was like you know i got through like a third of the movie and i'm like uh, uh, it yeah, wasn't like the you scene. know like top gun i was like really you know this, you know a lot of them babylon i thought actually i mean i mean you think brad pitt would have been a shoo-in for for best actor for that um uh you know but i i love certainly the first you know Two hours and thirty minutes. And so, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Well, that's, so, that's, 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 movies are so long now. Well, they, you know, they. Uh, I don't know what the thinking is to make movies that long. I mean, sometimes you know, when you're watching at night, I choose movies based on how long they are because uh, it's a time commitment. Yeah, right. Uh, or you break it up into different nights, but everything, everywhere at once, or everywhere everything at once, whatever that is, it has a lot of emotional momentum with the first. Asian actress for, uh, being nominated for Best Actress. I believe that she'll win, and her name is, yep. uh, just to make sure I get it, Michelle Yeo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I also believe that, you know, the guy that played uh, uh, in the supporting actor who uh, was in the Indiana Jones Indiana movie. Indiana Jones movie. There's a lot of, there's a backstory to that. And so there's a lot of emotion in that. But uh, I think Jamie Curtis will actually win for Best Supporting Actress really? for, for that. Because you're recognizing a body of work, not necessarily the, the actress herself. So that, that's, that there are backstories going in. Um, but, you know, you, you, it's, it's, it's Bill Murray and Tootsie again. Uh, what was that? <laughs> and and, and <laughs> so, you know, there are a number of... of Movies, not just you know, we we mentioned Top Gun, but there are other movies that are very enjoyable and they keep you keep you enthralled. And it doesn't the nominees don't always have to be uh, those; they can include intellectual things. But uh, 
when you see everywhere at once, um, you have to go. Uh, well, that was that was interesting. It's not the same thing as that was great, right? You know, it's it's that, you, you you look for great. That yeah. that's the, and that's the award ceremony. I think we should start. Mm -hmm. That was really great. I'm gonna watch it again. Mm -hmm. uh, award ceremony because I tend to judge films less on just the critical or what's hot or what's current necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like, what has kind of a, a, a longer shelf life? What, you know, the cult the cult classics, the ones that didn't do well in the bo box office, the ones that didn't get any awards that I will still watch today. Uh, you know, you, there's a long list on my top 100 films of all time that didn't make any of those categories. Um, and there's also a ton of films that have won awards in Oscars past that I would never watch again. And I think that's really, <laughs> yeah. I think that's the mark of a good film is would you watch it again? Like. Uh, you know, Parasite. I think it was a brilliant film, right? It won. That was yeah, the best picture. But you, yeah, it, but I'd never watch never it, again. Want to see it again. Ever. And that's not like, never. Because of the the feeling that leaves inside. You know, there's the, one of the movies that I think, in some ways, is a great movie and also a crowd pleasing movie is Elvis. Oh, the yeah, performance yeah. is fantastic. Oh, yeah. the, the the you know the metaphor pyrotechnics of of the explosive performance that Austin Butler gives. Austin Butler. Uh, you know, that is a, a movie that has elements of greatness. Now, you can't get a great movie every time. I mean, you know, th they often use the example of Citizen Kane, which is considered one of the best American movies of all time. Well, you know, How Green Was My Valley beat that that year. Did I mean, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Oscars are, are a combination of the industry and the glamour and the politics. And you say it is unfortunate about politics. Well, politics enters everything, every aspect of our life. So even if this was, you know, uh, let's say you give awards in uh, for Florida Weekly or you give awards for any well, The business, Fort Myers Film Festival. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Fort Myers Film Festival. There's an element of, of politics to it that doesn't go exactly to, is this a great movie that will last throughout the ages? And no one can really predict that either. That's the thing is no one can... You don't really know. And, and, and also, one thing I've learned being the director of the Fort Myers Film Festival mm -hmm. is the films that come in, the ones that I think are great, and it's also nice to have a committee and we do a, uh, a series where we have kind of the public view, it is that you know, every, there's something for everyone, but you can't expect that just because you like it, everyone else is going to like it. Yeah. And because you love it, that it's even good. Uh, it just there's, it's, it's all from your point of reference and from your point of view. So whether or not Austin Butler wins, you know, for Elvis, uh, remains to be seen. Is that what you're going to yeah. think you give it to Austin Butler at this uh, point? Well, you've got, this is the most unique thing about this year's Oscars is that 16 out of the 20 nominees for acting, best, best supporting actor, best supporting actress, actor, actress, are first time. They're first time oh, nominees. Really? So 16 out of 20, is, is their first shot up. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's exciting because all, you know, the other element of Oscars is also, you know, what you take away, publicity. So you can, you know, when the when your next movie comes out, it says, you know, Academy Award nominee or Academy Award winner. Yeah. Um, that didn't do very well, like Cuba Gooding Jr., but, you know, that's... <laughs> or Jennifer Lawrence, really. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, there is kind of a, mm -hmm. once you make it, uh, you're not really guaranteed it anymore. And in mm -hmm. the box office and you know, your, your, your abilities as an actor and actor probably change based upon how you feel about yourself after winning, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, or, or whether this was a fluke or a niche role or, mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, the, the, but that is exciting is that you have so many new actors and actresses yeah. uh, and, and recognizing that talent instead of falling back on, let's say, mediocre projects that, that, you know, that people have been nominated multiple times. Um, uh, the, the, the Tom thing, Hanks did not get nominated for Pinocchio. No, no. Well, <laughs> or, or Elvis. Yeah, it's and just, I love yeah. Tom Hanks. I love, I Tom, I love the, Tom Hanks my too. My best favorite movies have yeah. Tom Hanks in them, but yeah. he is in two this year. And he's <laughs> arguably one of my favorite actors, but I would never give him an award for Pinocchio. Well, or his, that, and that role he played for Elvis actually kind of ruined Elvis for yeah, me. It was, it, it was kind of definitely, definitely a was poorly a, thought out deal, but you know, you know, I think Tom Hanks is one of one of my favorite actors and also one of the best actors of our generation. And he also is in a remake of a Swedish film now called A Man Called Otto. Was that which, good? I didn't uh, see it yet. The Swedish one is great. Oh, okay. 
I haven't seen this one because I'm really afraid that oh, no. that Mr. Hanks has made yet another mediocre choice. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, there are so many things that go into making a movie. You look at the script; the script seems okay. And yeah, it's hard and to know where it's going to end up. There, but that's I, you know, I know. I know this actually. I think it was the Golden Globes where uh, uh, Colin Farrell accepted uh, the he won for best actor for Bad Shoes Us. Insurance. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Whatever. We'll get it done at some point. It's called Banshee. <laughs> he, um, I remember him saying that he uh, puts his best effort into uh, his films, and then he often, he, I think he said he was surprised almost horrifically, I think was the words he chose, but in a good way because you never know how it's going to be edited, mm -hmm. what the notes are going to be, the, you know, the, the post-production, the, uh, the flow. You just you show up on set. You have trust and faith in your director and the team. You hope that by the end it turns out good. And I think Hanks, um, you know, the people that he's trusting or the scripts he's trying, I'm not saying his effort's poor. I'm just, and, and, and maybe, maybe because he is Tom Hanks, there's a part of him that thinks that he could take on almost any role because he has won the awards. He has, you know, like he has done so well. At some point, are you just like, or, 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 or the people around you, like the yes men, I think that could be kind of a negative determining factor. Like people are like, oh, that's Tom Hanks. So whatever, he's, we can't speak against Tom Hanks. You almost need somebody that be like, no, Tom Hanks, that is not working. That I know the makeup artist and she's friends with me or he is friends with me and your makeup is not good and you, you don't look believable. It looks like a bad Center Night Live skit, Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. Some, but who's going to tell him that? Someone's well, got to be... Yeah. Someone got to tell him that. Yeah, and then someone got to tell him that, Douglas. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody got to be whispering in his yeah. ear. You know, no, Tom, you, you are Tom you're, Hanks. You're, you're channeling Foghorn Leghorn in, uh, boy, you know, in Elvis. Look at what I'm talking to, boy. Belvedere, yeah, right, right. <laughs> come here, boy. Come here, boy. Uh, the, but you see, the one of the things that you just mentioned that you keyed in on, you know, you get excited about showing movies to people or movies that you have seen before that you just you just love i always counsel people against re-watching movies that they have a special fondness for that they saw in a particular period of time because your movie going experience often has to do with the person you're with the the time in which you see it the dinner you had the dinner before, you had the, 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 the after party the back at the house that's right those are the things that, and they and movies can become if it's super special an event but you watch movies that uh, that become your favorites, and you you tout them as as your favorites, and you tell you tell your wife or your brother or your best friend you've got to see this movie, and then it's happened to it's happened to me a number of times. I'm watching it with them, and I go, oh boy, uh, 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 this is this this. this this had to be because it was a date movie, or this had to be because of this particular yeah, time it's, in my life. It's yeah, it's it's, it's an, an it's experience. It's associated with an element that it might. Have, yeah, if you see the if you see the right movie on the wrong day too. Yeah, you can be like, you know, maybe I maybe I should have seen that a different element. Or, or yeah, or or the thing, the other thing that the Oscars kind of celebrate since it is both an art and an industry is a successful collaboration that nobody thought would work. Meaning like uh, Casablanca or, uh, you know, uh, Dances with Wolves, or you can go back to the ones that, that should have been a disaster that, that, that turned out wonderful. So that's what you're talking about in terms of rolling the dice. You know, you know Casablanca, which is a revered film now and you know a lot of people use it as a touchstone for romance nobody involved in the movie nobody involved in the movie wanted to make it uh that was oh all, really yeah it was all contractual and they thought at the time it was going to be the biggest dud that they were ever involved in really and and that happens more often than not with great films that, that come together uh why is that Less it's, stress, less pressure, less like, hey, we've got nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah there's, there's, there's nothing certain, to lose on this one. Just there's roll. a certain relaxed uh, thing going, ah, this, this isn't going to work for me, and this isn't going to, you know, I have to do it because of the contract. So, yeah, you relax into it. Or, um, like you say, there's a process after everything is shot of the editing, the marketing, 
uh, the timing that the movie comes out, those, those type of things. Uh, you know, I was very happy to see Avatar Way of Water do well at the box office because these days when we're spending literally hundreds of millions of dollars on a movie, uh, you know, bad, badly received movies can just tank a studio and, you know, heads roll and I was concerned that nobody really wanted to see Avatar Way of Water. Uh, and I was worried about that because I'm one of them. I, I didn't necessarily... Wait, you're one of the executives on Avatar? No, I'm one of the executives. I'm one of the people that just didn't really want to see it. Oh, I wasn't sure there. <laughs> no, well, full, no, full of transparency, no, disclosure. No, no and it was... I, I don't. I didn't want to see it because uh, the because while they have all those wonderful visuals and everything, what they forgot really to hire was a writer. Okay. Um, but you know, you have uh, you have these odd little nominees like All Quiet on the Western Front. I say odd because basically that was a Netflix film, um, and that's nominated for Best Picture. It is grim and beautiful at the same time, and and that's the type of thing going back to what we talked about of actually pr promoting a movie simply by it being nominated, and people will go back to that. And, you see that movie and it changes your life a little bit. Hmm. Is it one of those movies that you want to see again? No freaking way. Yeah. Which of the films that were are nominated can you say you would want to watch again? Can I press you for that one? Because yeah. there's, a, there's a couple that I like. I would see Top Gun again. Uh, I would see Puss in Boots. Did you see that? It was pretty good. Animated. It's an alpha animated film. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Red film. Pixar's Red. Gone Red. Oh my God. Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Banshees, no. Oh gosh. There's no, so many, uh, so you many know, knows. You, you know, definitely. Um, Even one of my favorite, and, and I love Anna de, de, de Armas in Blonde. Blonde. Oh, it's, it's just hard to watch because mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe's childhood was so awful. And young adulthood, and then adulthood. And, but 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 I hope she wins. I hope she beats Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. And here's the reason why. I think she was acting more than Kate Blanchett was acting when it comes to the role that like well, we would, like like Anna was playing uh, an iconic figure, Marilyn Monroe. Who it's very hard to get Marilyn Monroe down, mm -hmm. and not not just her looks, but her the way she talked and spoke and her mannerisms. And I thought Anna killed it. Uh, Kate in Tar. I mean, it's Kate Blanchett. So. It's kind of like when you go buy, you know, a BMW or something. You know it's good. But is it really far from her character, from her personality? And I, like, I, kind of like, it's like the Will I Smith. Surely, it's surely, like the Will Smith <laughs> slap aside, uh, you know, method acting. Like, is the Will Smith in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air much different than the Will Smith in... Um, Men in Black. Men in Black. Right? Or, yeah. And the answer is no. Or Keanu Reeves. It's kind of the, the answer is no, because... Look, there are movie stars and there are actors, and sometimes they combine. But they, it, it's it's not exclusive. I've seen Will Smith act in Pursuit of Happiness or a different, yeah. different, uh, uh, King different James. King James. But you know, basically, he's a movie star, slap notwithstanding. Right. Um, you know, Kate Blanchett is an actress, but I've seen the high strung, brittle, um, hyper intelligent, self destructive character that she might as well trademark right you know so you know am i excited about seeing tar no freaking way i would never watch it again um the the but because i i feel that i've you know kind of got all the juice out of that it. <laughs> now i'm not saying that every movie has you have to come out feeling wonderful there are movies that make you think or change your life just a little bit but uh you know like Banshees is the best example for me. I, 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 the, it's beautifully shot, beautifully acted. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the bottom line is, even though it's supposed to be, I believe, a metaphor for the Irish conflict, mm -hmm. you just go, uh, no, right. no, this, didn't, this doesn't work. Oh, no, this doesn't and I, hold together. And I don't like when the guy was cutting his fingers off. It's yeah. Just, you know, I, I get it, but I don't. I would. I don't want to. Like it's given me. It's it was gruesome in a way. I, I, and ugh. and it was. And you just go. Where are we headed with this? And the answer is straight down the rabbit hole. Right. And one so, that well, and I didn't so, want to go down, and you know, I did. Uh, you know, one of my favorite movies in my top ten is the three of those people, the director, and 
Firth and uh, Brendan Gleeson in, in Bruges. But um, that movie is a wild ride, but at the end of it, even though it deals with some dark subjects, it has enough humor to carry it through. Here, we're just, we're just falling like a bowling ball coming down the stairs until we reach the, uh, until we reach the bottom. Well, reaching the bottom is might, might be where we were, we were at. <laughs> Since we both have to go to our day jobs, yes. uh, I want to say thank you uh, to those who might have tuned in. Uh, you know, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Mr. Douglas Malloy. I'm Eric Raditz, and we are so glad to be talking films. And we are certainly cinephiles, if nothing else. But uh, whether or not we are masters of cinema, oh, or, I don't think or that, just yeah, as I, sincere I enthusiasts, is I think sincere enthusiasts the, is better than than masters. Uh, than masters because. Probably. Yeah, we're really talking from our head and from our heart together and not just sending people blithely into seeing everything all at once without a warning. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Thanks, guys, for uh, tuning in. Until all next right. time. All Always right. a pleasure, Mr. Doug. All right. Let's get back to work, huh? Yeah.